The M1 MacBook Air revolutionized the laptop industry, but it came out in 2020 and it is now 2024. Apple is still selling it even though we now have the M3 MacBooks, so is it actually worth buying one? Well, even though last year I was telling people yes, in 2024 I would have to say no. Let me explain. The MacBook Air has been iconic ever since Steve Jobs pulled the original one out of an envelope and shocked the whole world. It was incredibly thin and light and the first Mac that really favored form over function, getting rid of a bunch of ports to make it thinner and lighter. With that, it was the first Mac to be shipped without a CD drive ever since those came out, being the first to use all SSD memory with very little capacity, all while being ultra expensive at the time. Fast forward to 2020 and the Mac finally ditched its x86 processor for an upgraded cell phone chip while massively improving performance over the previous version that came out the same year and it did so without even having a fan. That was really an embarrassment to Intel laptops, especially because it now costs $999 instead of $1200 for the much weaker i7. And you can now buy this M1 MacBook Air for $750 brand new on on Amazon. And for 750 bucks, I would not buy it. Now let's start with the design. I have to comment on it because I love it. It has this iconic wedge shape that has been around for a long time that is now going away. And I love how it just tapers down and especially love this gold color. I even miss and appreciate the MacBook Air logo on the inside because the new ones don't have that. Now, as far as speakers, this thing has dual stereo speakers with grills on the sides and they sounded really, really good when it came out. Right now, they still sound pretty good, but the M2 Air has a quad speaker system and the 15 inch version of that has a six speaker system that is louder and has quite a bit better bass. So you will get better audio if you spend a bit more money. The keyboard still feels really nice and the trackpad is great as well. It's a little bit smaller than the newer ones, but it does the job. Now, the thing that always gets me when I open this thing up are the bezels. It was not bad for the time, but now they seem huge compared to the new redesigned MacBook Air. And the 13.3 inch display seems a lot smaller than the 13.6 that's on that new design because as thinner bezels, it also has that notch, which actually doesn't take away from your screen because you have added real estate at the top there. So it is a noticeable difference. Now, in terms of the actual quality of display itself, it supports DCI P3 colors just like the new ones. So that is great. It's nice and sharp. And the only kind of downside is that we have uh, 400 nits of brightness compared to five or 600 on the newer ones. Now at the top, we have that webcam and it is unfortunately 720p. And nowadays it looks pretty bad compared to the 1080p on the new ones. Now, of course, not everybody is going to care about that, uh, but I think it is just nice to have something that looks decent if you ever have to make a video call or join a meeting. Now, as far as battery life, it was so impressive when it came out compared to its Intel counterparts. Now, Apple quotes the same 18 hours as it does for the new M2 version, but in reality, that is not really what you get because they really lower the brightness, they run a video on the Mac itself to get those numbers. Now, in the real world, you'll get eight to 10 hours of mixed battery life, which is slightly worse than you can get on the M2 version. And then the new M3 chip is even more efficient than that. Now with that, you also don't get fast charging. So to charge up to 50% takes more than an hour compared to just 30 minutes. And that is really nice if your laptop is dead or very low and you need to run to be able to just plug it in and get a lot of charge. Now, the biggest thing that I miss on this laptop now that we have the new ones is the fact that it doesn't have a MagSafe charging port. Um, now that is not only convenient because it disconnects and connects easily so you won't pull your Mac, but with that, it frees up the two ports that you have here on the sides uh, to be able to do other things. And that is very handy. 
Now, as far as the ports, Apple just lists Thunderbolt for all of their base level Macs, but this has Thunderbolt 3 compared to 4, so for most people it might not matter, but if you want to connect to multiple accessories or a dock, Thunderbolt 4 is more powerful. Now, one of the biggest limitations with the M1 was that they only supported one external display compared to the older Intels, but with that said, the M2 and the M3 chips still only support one. Now, on the inside, the Wi-Fi chip supports Wi-Fi 6, just like the M2, but the newer M3s have Wi-Fi 6E, which you might not even have a router for that, but in the real world, even using Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 6E chip will give you quite a bit faster speeds and better range, so that is something that I appreciate. And now, let's talk about how this thing performs. The M1 chip threw the smack down not only on the thin airs that it replaced, but also with its more expensive Windows rivals that had dual fan cooling, which literally became half of the M1 speeds if you unplug them. And the real world thermothrottling wasn't actually that bad compared to the desktop Mac mini or the M1 MacBook Pro that had a fan. So we ended up telling most people to skip that one and just go for the air and people listened and they loved it. I don't know if I have ever seen another laptop with 4.8 stars after nearly 20,000 reviews on Amazon with just this one listing. Now the previous Airs didn't have that, and the new ones are slightly lower as well. That just shows how iconic and incredible this machine was, and it brought over a bunch of Windows fans to Apple. Even within the last week, we have new reviews from people that are so impressed. And it is true, for most people, the M1 chip performs very well even in 2024, beating out laptops that people are replacing with this new machine, while it's even thinner and lighter. So why would I not buy one? Well, it has all to do with pricing and value. When its replacement, the M2 MacBook Air launched, it cost 1200 bucks. And at that point, I told people to just go for the M1, which was discounted down to 900 bucks. That is a 33% price difference for the same amount of RAM and storage. And that's just something that you have to take into account. But now in 2024, you can get an M2 Air for 899 bucks, only a 149 more for a much updated machine. And if you're watching this video a bit after it's posted, the M3 version will be on the market. Now, the new design isn't as iconic, but it is actually slimmer and lighter. With that, you get the MagSafe charging port and the larger display, a better webcam, better speakers, better battery life with fast charging, and of course, better performance. The new chips do make it snappier in day-to-day -day tasks, and the graphics performance is all also really nicely improved. And looking at performance per dollar, it really starts to make sense to spend just a bit more. And if you're not as budget conscious, the M3 version really improves certain tasks because of new decoders and ray tracing technology. So even though you can buy one for 750 bucks, it is a computer that came out in 2020 with a lot of 2020 tech and features. So you're not getting as good of a value compared to spending just a little bit more. And if you're like most people, you're not gonna just have it for a year. You're gonna have it for two, three, four, or even five years. Now, if you are really on a budget, I would say go for one, but find it used for $500 or less, and then it really starts to make sense again. And when it's time for you to upgrade, you'll be able to get most, if not all of your money back. So this is still one of my favorite laptops ever, but in 2024, it is finally time for us to stop recommending it. Let us know your thoughts down in the comments section below. Click that circle above to subscribe to see more videos and check out that one right over there. This has been Max and I will see you in the next one.